watchfulness, service and gr gratefulness. We encourage Christians on how our hearts and churches can be kept clean through watchfulness, service and gratefulness. These three mindsets to guide your life are watchfulness, service to others and gratefulness as these three attitudes can help us keep clean the temple of the Holy Spirit and our Lord's Christ and God. There are two different scriptures where the temple must be reconsecrated due to the improprieties having occurred there. From the Old Testament there is the book of the Maccabees where Judas and his brothers reconsecrate the temple desecrated by the pagans. And Luke's Gospel where Jesus drives out merchants from the temple having transformed it into a den of thieves. The most important temple of God is our heart where the Holy Spirit dwells. Can we keep watch over this interior temple? And are we careful about what happens in our heart temples, about who comes in and who goes out, the feelings, the ideas that occur within. Do we talk to the Holy Spirit and listen to Him? We urge you all to keep watch over what happens within this most vital of all temples. Keep it sacred. Keep it clean. This heart temple can be safeguarded and cared for through service. You are always called upon to serve others. But all Christians need to examine their conscience and see if they fulfill to the best of their physical and financial abilities, whether they help to clothe and console those in need and follow the guides of Matthew 25, 31, 46. In this regard, I ask you all to recall St. John Chrysostom, who reprimanded those who were making many offerings to decorate the church, but were not caring for the needy at all saying, this is not good, her first service than decoration. Purifying the temple means caring for others. When we come forward to serve, to help, to resemble Jesus, who is inside of us. And gratefulness, the third attitude, helps in keeping the temple clean. How many times do we sadly enter a temple, a parish, a bishop's house, and so on, not knowing whether we are in the house of God or in a grocery? There have been businesses, including the price list for the sacrament. Nothing is free. But God saved us freely without making us or anyone pay. In this regard, if money is needed to maintain the buildings, priests and so on, you must give freely and God will do the rest. God will provide what is lacking, but no Christian church must ever become a place where sacraments are a fee-for-service proposition, where only the rich and middle class may afford to be married or buried within the church proper, while the lesser folk, the people that Christ loved so much, must find a different way to celebrate their blessed living sacramental celebrations such as weddings, baptism, and funeral rites within the Christian church. 
in Christ's time, they used the tax to keep the poor away from the services that the rich preferred to attend. So in those services, they raised the tax so that in the non-desirable services, the poor could come pray then. When the Christ was to have taken me, he relented, deciding I served him well, alive and speaking. I went to what I called my home parish. Joke that. The pastor knew, as I told him under seal of confession, that I had at one point been forced to seal food, for my food stamps didn't cover beyond a week at that time, and you can only go to the food shelves once a month. So at about the 20th to 25th of each month, I was doing everything I could to hold myself. I advised that I lived at 75 to 83 percent of the federal poverty limit at that time. And when you included all income, social security, which paid the mortgage and the remaining funds were insufficient for all utilities. He spoke of how sad this made him, how I had all these gifts and could not give them away, for the IRS would call me a tax cheat even though there was no income on which to pay. Two weeks later, I signed up for funeral services, noting I would need no priest. I had a handful of my own friends who would do it. Music, I had the group I used to sing with. Nor would we need any special services, as with all those issues would come attended. The same pastor to whom I had spoken for confession, and who was becoming a very good friend of my mother, said, we charge $500 for the use of our church for anything, as we have to pay the heat, the AC, the lights. To which I replied, Michael, you've lost your mission behind all the spreadsheets. You no longer have the ability to show mercy, to minister to those who are poor, but not yet on the streets. As I could hear him getting ready to tell me how much they do for the poor. But when confronted by a person of your own congregation that has held on to her house by using every single cent she has, but leaving nothing to pay for groceries, leaving nothing for haircuts, leaving nothing for a movie once a year, leaving nothing to eat at McDonald's once a year. You don't see us as poor because we are not living on the streets, but we are poor. The only difference between us and them is one thing, a roof. Do not lose sight of everything for lack or want of a roof. I will pray that the Lord gives him new glasses, which will allow him to see all who are poor, all those who have no ability to pay the outrageous fees you have set, Michael. And if you ask my elderly mother, who has $500 more than me each month, you should be banished to Gehenna 
if you take a cent from her small, small treasure of funds. For that would surely show your soul amongst the money changers in the temple. We shouldn't ever again see worship taxes instituted as we have at some churches now, including the Basilica of St. Mary in Minneapolis. But luckily, Michael has found a new church from which to preach. Those pre pastors who have lost Christ in their zeal to pay their bills. We wish all our churches to be churches of service, but churches that are not fee for service. We all pray for you, Michael, that you are able someday to look beyond structures, to quit worrying about your damned roof, to quit worrying about the damned structure of the church and worry about the church and people. People make a church, not a roof. People are the church, not the structure. Open your eyes, Michael. Open your eyes. Christ is crawling your name out. And you're saying, I have to answer this call, Lord. Just give me one moment. 